What is up, guys? This is Bashak, and you are watching En Route, which is our brand new content segment where we marry culture with business. This show is, as ever, sponsored by the good folks over at Roadmap MBA. Now, we are so excited to have acclaimed director, filmmaker, and executive producer, Femi Oynerian, with us here today. Let me tell you, Femi's resume is long. He joins us off the recent launch of his brand new film, Trapping. Femi, hi. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Totally butchered your surname after I just said that I wasn't going to do that. Did. You did. You were like, you were like, you, look, you looked at it and it made you scared. It's oh yay, it's oh yay, that's it. Oh yay, oh yay, Neron, no, I got it. Yeah, it's like oh yay. You're yeah, excited to see me. I am. You brought the sun out. Yep, yeah, well. No, you did Allegedly. Didn't. It's allegedly it's blue skies i'm loving it allegedly <laughs> now looking at the work that you've done and the work that you continue to do there's a real kind of creative pattern um that follows throughout your career um in terms of the projects that you take on at this stage when you get approached for like oh i've got this really good idea for something that should be a film how do you go about deciding the kinds of work you want to get involved with and kind of what does that discernment process look like for you today? I mean, it's pretty much like taste and passion led. So mm. it just depends if if I'm, and also it depends on what I'm doing at the time. So sometimes I'm just like, you know what, you've got this idea, sounds amazing. Mm. I can't help you, but here's someone that can. Mm. Or you've got this idea, it sounds amazing. Let me read it. Let me come back to you. But there's like not really many projects that I've got involved in that are not necessarily mine. Mm. It's not there's not really that many because I've got loads of ideas of my own. I'm also like a creative person in myself. And also the reason I do what, what I do is like mainly to be creative and on a secondary basis to do business. I'm not in it just for the business. I'm in it because I'm passionate about the creativity too. And so in a way, um, you sort of um it has to be really really good for me to like want to do one of your projects and not one of mine mm. and kind of give up that headspace and time and energy yeah yeah and also like you know like the, it takes a lot to get something done so I need to what what a new standard that I need to start applying which I have not applied is like you know do I really want to spend a long time with this person wow I love that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I like you? You know what I mean? Okay. So like if you're a, if you're a stranger and you come up to me and you're like, we want to do I want to do a project with you, like we we're gonna have to go through a lot of vetting for mm -hmm. us to get to a place where I actually want to do one of your projects. This is new, like you know, I've not necessarily been applying this standard, but because ultimately it's my time and do I want to spend my time and also it's your time you end up, you end up having a baby together right that's what yeah and also do I yeah do I want to be like do I have a child with you? yeah do I want to have a, a, a project child with you no I don't know if I do yeah or maybe, or I, maybe really I do right. very exciting love that. you have been there since the start of a lot of projects kiddlehood being kind of one of the big ones Fast forward, and Kiddo came out in 2006, right? So fast forward to now, looking at the time, mm. timeline, are you just so proud and excited looking at the stage that kind of Black British film has with, with you know, TV series like Top Boy and Drake producing and this, that, and the other kind of that global lens and that the whole world is now looking at um, the British filmmaking world with? Does that make you excited that we're now getting the moment then? No, I still feel like when we're in our infancy and there's still so much to be done. Mm. And so in a way, I'm I'm even I feel like I'm just starting. I don't even feel like I've done anything yet. So in a way, um I should be excited because it's there's a lot more getting done than when I first started, but I'm not excited because I just feel like, oh, we're still in the beginning, there's still so much to do. Mm. There's still so many things I want to do. And yeah. so it's um it's difficult to be super excited. Okay. Can you track the progress though? Can you say, okay, we, we were here and now we're here? Does that, is, is that yeah, 100%. Point? I feel like, remember, Netflix didn't even exist when we did Kiddo. So like, there's like things that, that 
I can't even fathom where we're going to go next because, like, you have to remember, it was technology that allowed us to be able to go from kid old to top boy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So in a way, it's 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 difficult to... I think definitely, like, it's exciting because there's, like, a, a, a young... There's an acting community. There's, like, you know, aspirations and being in TV shows and, and like, films and all of these things. And, like, some of these things are very easily achievable, unattainable mm-hmm. by people. However, um, you can't get complacent. Yeah. yeah. The, the work continues. Mm-hmm. Which is why we're here today. That, that, that's right. You have been both an actor and a director, executive producer, all these different kind of hats that you wear. How does it feel to hold all of those vantage points in, in, in your experience today? And is there a certain alchemy? And that's the word I want to use. I, mean, I don't overthink it. I think that's the main thing. Just don't overthink it. Just do the work at hand. Mm. I'm always, I'm I'm about the work. So I just want to get the work done. I don't really care about, anything else it sounds really bizarre yeah. and so it depends what I'm doing on the project so at the moment I've got a show with Comedy Central um I'm the director and exec producer and um, and with that you know I'm working on that and that's what I'm doing I've been doing alongside with releasing Trapping and then you've got some sh- like with that show I could have acted in it but I was like no I don't really want to act in this because already I'm doing so much mm-hmm. and so but I would have loved to act in it, but it was just, I could weigh up where we were at and I was just like, you know what, it's too much. And then there's certain things like, you know, the Netflix show, Turn Up Charlie, I was just a writer on that. That was great to just go on something and be a writer and just soak in the writing process. It's fantastic. There's other things, you know, um, trapping, I'm a producer, I'm a producer on that. Again, I was just there as those roles. I, th- I had a small acting role, but like, not even because I necessarily wanted to be in it, but I needed someone to play that character and it was that kind of fit in my age group. Mm-hmm. And so I did, I did that character. But, you know, there's there's just different, different, um, different applications. I, I say what I do depends on what the project needs. Mm-hmm. What do you love doing? I love doing everything I do. Yeah. I love acting the most. Yeah. Everyone's like, really? Like, you don't even do acting that much. Uh, I thought you don't mm-hmm. even like... I love acting the mo- most because it's just pure creativity. You don't have to think about business. Like, your agent does your deal, or you do your deal, or whatever. Once that deal is done, you just get to act. You just show up. Yeah, and you act. And you have to show up, though. Showing up is hard. Mm-hmm. You have to be good. You have to show up, be really good do what is required required of you and then keep it moving, mm-hmm. right? And that's challenging. Like, people think, oh, it's just easy. Just come say some lines or be yourself, say some lines. You know, acting is challenging. It's a t- challenging task. But for me, mm-hmm. acting and writing are very creative. Like, they're very much about the creativity. Um, Directing's a little bit, but, like, you're just a manager. You're managing creative people. You're managing the makeup, the hair, the this, the, the, your manager, like your creative manager. Like you're giving the team a vision and then you're making sure that the team implements that vision of yours. Like, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like management, right? Um, In a creative setting. Production is business. It's accounting and law. Um, and exec producer, you might have to put up some money or raise some money as well. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's like... Yeah, yeah. There's just there's just um different roles require different things, but for me, like the purest thing mm. is being creative and acting and writing are probably the most creative jobs. Mm-hmm. And you know, you are a manager when you're doing some of the other production based things that you've mentioned, but all you're doing is facilitating the space for the creativity to, to come to life. You're not being the creative; you're protecting the creative, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm necessary mm-hmm. everyone's got to do it um we, we we see what happens when people don't protect the creatives the way that they need yeah. to, you know protect it but uh yeah there is something so beautiful about that pure essence and stripping back all of the layers and you know you you find out something about yourself i'm sure by the end of the day more in acting than in any other space mm. yeah i think i think i think 
I mean, I love all the roles. Like, I just love all the roles because, like mm-hmm. I said, sometimes I even get a choice, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man, I just... You know, what got me in the business is acting. I was excited. I was a kid. I wanted to act. I wanted to show the world what I could do, mm. creative expression. And I that was what I did. And so for me, that's 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 it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. Let's talk about trapping. I was at your immersive, very immersive film premiere. It was a, a night like no other, which was what was promised. So thank you for that. And the film is uh, like no other. Uh, from the snippets that I've seen, I haven't seen this whole thing just yet. I will do. Tell me about why you guys decided to kind of explore these characters in the story um, in such a visceral way. I mean, it was disturbing at times. Um, I think it was important to us to make this film in the most authentic way possible um, because um that's the reality of this world and also every film that we make we like we like it to feel real we like it to feel authentic mm. and so i remember reading it um it was written by penny walcock and dylan Duffus, and i remember reading it and just thinking wow this is crazy and it made me feel something and i also wanted it to make the audience feel something because mm. i felt like if it made me feel something then i want then it will definitely make the audience feel something you know and that was important to me. I feel like every film should make people feel. And this film made me feel. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because at the same time, it it was, it was, it is like, you know, an uncomfortable watch. It doesn't want to be, the subject matter is uncomfortable. You know, kids going to the countryside to sell drugs, like a kid doing that. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. And And then also the experience of that needed to not apologize for what it was and so yeah that, that's why it was done in that way mm. and maybe we should be uncomfortable by that reality right no exactly you know it's it's not right. it's not um why why should you feel comfortable to watch people take drugs yeah or have to, to watch to people that them. to watch people that are addicted to drugs take drugs why should we move why should that be a comfortable thing to watch? And you know the, uh, the the one thing that came out of the bits that I did see was you know for the for the young main protagonist he was trying to get money on the table for his mom. Yeah, that was important to show and that's the reality for a lot of people who go into. Yeah, work. some people are struggling. Some people are struggling financially, and some people and some kids always say, you know, I'm doing it for my mom. Like you know, I'm doing mm-hmm. it for. And I wanted to show. We wanted to show what that looked like. Mm. sometimes they weren't even really doing it for their mom. They were doing it for their yeah, ego. The yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing it for the money. They're doing it for the chain. They're doing it for, for trainers. They're doing it for, like, you know, all of that. Kids. They want these yeah. Yeah. But But also we wanted to show, like, you know, what it could look like if 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 what that doing it for mom looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on that note, and when I read this, I was really happily kind of amazed yourself and a whole kind of wider coalition of activists are currently calling on the government to launch a creative grant scheme to help young people so that they have uh, more options outside of gangs in real life right could Mm -hmm. you speak on that a little bit yeah I think like you know young people young people now unless you you're able to go to um your parents are able to fund after school clubs yeah. there's not there's nothing to do outside of school that is not expensive and the idea is that you know there's a grant like you know the government gives out a grant to these young people to be able to you know have youth clubs or to apply for funding to do stuff outside of school and stuff like that and so that's that's what we want mm-hmm. Ezra Collective in their recent win um, spoke on this actually I thought it was a really nice tie-in to the importance of again safe spaces for young people yeah, I mean, what Ezra Collective, there, I love those guys when they're dope. But at the same time, I think, yeah, that's our, that's that's what we benefit. That's what I benefit from to get into creativity. I drama school, mm. um, outside of school, that was free. Like you know, I, my parents weren't gonna pay. Well, I'm sure they could have or they might have tried, but they mm. they it wasn't their priority. It wasn't definitely not on their priority priority list to pay for me to go into acting class. So. For me, I benefited from like you know, from that like you know being able to 
to do acting every week after school on a Monday or Tuesday or something, mm. like for free, mm. like the <laughs> like for free, because because and it was up to a high level. We 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 did performances in theaters and it wasn't like we were doing it at, at a low level. And there were loads of us that benefited from that funding that was given to 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 us as young people to to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And as a young kid, you know that kind of just stimulus can be uh, life changing. You know, no, for sure. Surprising. And also, it meant that I was um even outside of being being that, it meant that I was able to like explore new spaces as a kid, and it meant that I was able to make friends outside of my school in my area as a kid. There was just so many benefits to mm-hmm. to that for me mm-hmm. that you know, in a way, um. I, I don't see why that doesn't exist for young people anymore unless their parents are rich, which yeah. is unfair. Completely agree. On the subject of money, let's talk about your role as a, like executive producer in uh, this film. Um, how does the kind of funding for films of this nature kind of work? And what does an executive producer mean for those? That are an interested? executive producer, some executive producers on this project just gave us money towards the project mm-hmm. mm, in my position i was responsible for kind of harnessing the role of exec producer and producer right so raising the money mm-hmm. making the connections and making sure that that money was managed well so that we could achieve what we set out to achieve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was it really is that you know i was i was able to delve into my network raise find raise funding and then on top of that i was able to get to get other people to do that um and i was connected through people like penny Mm -hmm. like also got some of our friends involved and like loads of different people got their their team and their friends involved and i was able to pitch them what our proposition was raise money that way and then make the film is the budget you had in mind the budget you ended with, or does it always inflate to another level? It, all, it always moves, but not if you're a good producer or exact producer, it doesn't inflate to a crazy level. Okay. But it's it always like there's always unanticipated things. It's hard to come in on a low budget British movie or something like that because we're working at such a, on a, such a tight rope. It's mm-hmm. hard to come in way on the budget or like way over budget because it's somewhere in between because where are we gonna we, i can't go back to my investors and say oh yeah i need triple the money i ask you for it's not it's not like i'm working for a studio who has a bo- bottomless pool of money because yeah. if i was working at a studio it's a completely different approach to to producing like you know when i when i make tv shows so i'm making a tv show for comedy central at the moment yeah. and if things go over budget, I go back to the channel and say, we've gone over budget here. We are where we are, right? <laughs> can, we have more mo- can we have more money? Basically, most of the time is that, can we have more money? But if with, with what I like to say is that TV is more um, like running a business because you can always go to your funders and blah, blah, blah. And film is more like being an entrepreneur. Yeah, small business owner. That's what you are. Yeah, film is like being a small business owner, and TV is like running a business, like an established, more like established. Like business. a media. Yeah, you could just go to your funders, and be like, "Hi, right, boss. Um, we've sort of run out of money. Can you give us more?" Uh, Whereas yeah. film is like, you know, you make the most of what you have. <laughs> I mean, the film is out, right? I've seen the billboards all around Old Street and around East and all the other places that I've Yeah. Been. How does that feel now that you've done the slow slog and made the difficult calls and, you know, got to this point? Are, are you? Do you take the moment? Something tells me you don't take the moment. I don't take the moment. I don't know what my problem is. Um, no. I'm, always, I'm always chasing the next thing, right? Yeah. So I woke up the next day, I was back on, like, you know, the Comedy Central show. Yeah. And um, because I, because you know what what it is, no matter what, wh- whether it's successful, whether it's a failure, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Nothing matters. You just have to keep going. Expand on that. So basically, yeah, you're only as good as your last job. Sure. But 
once you do your last job, what's your next job? Yeah. I remember doing kiddo, and people were like, oh my gosh, what are you doing next? I didn't know what I was doing next. I was like some kids. I didn't even know about acting. But people kept saying, what's next? What's next? And so for me, I'm always like, if you ask me what's next, I'm like, oh yeah, I've got Comedy Central show coming up. Yeah. There's always something next. I have to make sure, my role is to make sure there's something next. Otherwise, when you ask me what's next and I have nothing next, that gives me anxiety. Yeah, yeah. But yes. sit in the moment in between, right? Because otherwise, it's kind of like birthdays, if I may, right? If you don't celebrate your birthday and you go around the sun, it's just another day. And you have nothing to time mark your footsteps on this earth. And that matters to do that. So with Project... Oh. Big and right. I'm I'm the worst at it as well. So over the years, I've had to be very good at kind of going, okay, cool. Don't jump from podcast to podcast or interview to interview and stop trying to collect people like Pikachu's. Just be present. Yeah, no, you're right. I think it's important. Um, I think I definitely um I definitely need to um allow more room for mindfulness mm. after projects. I suppose I'm doing that now. I'm trying to do that with this project. Like to really like reflect on what the next steps are, and um sometimes I do go away, yeah, because it's like a definite break. So I might be going away next week, go away, come back, and going away is like the project's over, yeah, and then you come back and then like couple holidays, take a minute, yeah. take a yeah, minute. I'm like a kid, right? Like a kid, I need half term or summer holidays or something. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, for any young people listening in who maybe kind of really would like to get into the creative industries and don't don't know how to kind of launch in, uh, do you have any advice for filmmakers specifically? I would say make films, make as many films as you can. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is that if you want to get muscles, you just have to go to the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to eat the right food, you have to have the right diet, but actually... If you want to get big and muscly, you have to train. And so I would say, you know, look look at film as that. If mm. you want to make films, make you, have to, you, have to, you have to train. And that training comes from practicing, you know, and that practice comes from making films. So I would just say make, make as many films as you can, regardless of budget. Do you know what's mad? Audiences don't care what your budgets are. I agree. No one goes and watches a film. The thing is, the thing is, a Beyonce budget for a Beyonce album is not the same budget as for, I Joe don't Blogs. know, some other artists pick. Yeah, Joe Blogs. But, yeah, exactly, Joe Blogs, right? Yep. And so Joe Blogs' album, when I listen to it, I'm not thinking, ooh, this sounds like less budget than Beyonce's album. Yeah. You know Honestly, it's less, but you also know it's less and you're cool with it. Yeah, but you don't think of, like, people co- don't consume creativity through the prism of mm-hmm. budget. Like, it only, it only shows when Marvel's got all the special effects and you don't. Or Beyonce's got, like, Transition. she's flying. She's flying at a concert. Yeah. Literally, she's floating in the air and you're like, she literally was. Like, I was at the concert. She's literally floating in the air and you're like, whoa, that's crazy. They've got budget here. Yeah. Like, like, but ultimately, most people just consume whether they like mm. whether they have a good time or not through the prism of that. So I just say make make the best quality stuff that you can on your budget. But mm. at the same time, just like, you know, if you focus on telling really good stories, people are not watching for like, oh, I wonder how much money they spent on that. Mm. and also you know what i always say is that budget is not indicative to good product there are sort of rappers i can name that i won't name but there's sort of rappers that i name that i think their output their authentic output has gotten visibly worse because mm. they have more money because they've lost connection to the source of what i call the source of creativity because they're so mm. blinded by so many other things they can't quite have that conversation with themselves let alone with the masses as one of my I agree. it's like the higher you go up that kind of I go back and I listen to his old stuff which I don't care about 2023 because there's something in the old unevolved version of him that is actually more authentic to me or resonates mm. so it's not always you know money isn't the answer you know even knowing how to spend it is important where to put the money is important but actually 
I think something else that you just said, which is putting in the work and then showing up for the craft, that that is what Beyonce does. She has all the money in the world, but she's also got all the hours. She does the work, yeah. She does the work. Air miles, as we call them in my industry. I love it. <laughs> Very cool. For you as a man of many talents then, which of your own three, and I want adjectives, three character attributes of your own, can you look at if we take a pause and reflection together to say that like, cool, the, these are the ones that I've relied on to succeed in this industry? I'm very hard working. Mm -hmm. I think I should work smarter though. I think I just work hard. I just I believe in hard work and yeah. like but I think I could be more strategic in the way I work. Sure. Um so I think it's good to be hard working because it's got me to where I am. But I think I could be more I could work smart, not hard. Mm, okay. That would so so yeah, there's one. And then um with a caveat. Yeah, no, everything has a caveat. Everything's I think I'm also um I try to say yes as much as possible because, mm. again, we should wield the power to say no, but I say yes a lot. I'm very easy. Like, you know, if, if there's something, if there's no obstacle to me doing something, I'll just say, yeah, like, like you asked me to do this. I was like, yeah, cool. Mm. I'm just very much, I, I try to say yes as much as possible. And then also I have, like, a very strong network of people yeah. right um and maybe that comes from me saying yes a lot yeah and showing up for your people yeah i show up for people a lot right so so i have a strong network of not just industry people just normal people like you know there's like i mean there's a guy at some a food a food spot that i used to go to in um soho yeah right when I was I was editing a show called The Evolution of Black British Music and I went there for lunch every single day because I was editing this show. Yeah. Like his name's Mo. That's my friend. Like I've got his number. Like yeah. I've taken him out to Shoreditch House. But he just works at the food spot. Like he works in the kitchen. Like <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I mean? A hundred percent. And actually can I just say that show you just mentioned did win an NTS, so no, no, RTS, RTS. RTS, props to yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but the, but, but the point is, like, you know, that man messaged me the other day, Femi, how are you? I've not seen you in a long time. But that's a regular man. Like, that's a man that works in a shop in Soho that, because mm -hmm. I've engaged with him and we've engaged with each other, that's my guy, like, mm -hmm. and, and that's important. And now he's your community. Yeah, and and and... And that's how we build community, like, and, you know, I forgot what country Mo's from. Mo's Egyptian, I think. But the point is, like, this is someone that yeah. just works at a shop like that. But because I come in the shop, like, you know, I'm, I'm not just coming there consuming their service. I'm like, I engage with the people. Yeah. So I think it's very important to be, um to have, like, real authentic relationships mm. with real people and not just to take, take, take. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like they are giving you a service, even if they are just a worker at a shop, like they're human too. And I try to humanize them. And I remember my friend, if I could add one more, my friend one day was like, Femi, so interesting. Um, have you ever worked in a shop before? I said to him, no. He said, I've noticed every time we go in a shop, you talk to the people, you ask how they're doing, like you really like, you yeah. really try to speak to them and engage with them. And, you know, he said, I used to work in a shop and, like, I used to hate when people just spoke to me like I was a machine. Yeah. And so, like, th that's why I asked you, have you worked in a shop before? Because, like, the way you engage with them. Do you know what like, it's like? Yeah, it's like, you know what it's like. I'm like, no, I don't know what it's like. I just, I just like, I just like people. Yeah. Beautiful. If I might add one thing to the list that you've given me, for the little that I do know of you. Um, I think you also follow your nose. And I think that's a really nice trait to have. But you do it quietly. You're quietly curious. No, I think it's important to be curious, man. That's what we have to be as as storytellers. Mm. Like, you know, I was out at a friend's birthday on Saturday, on Friday or Saturday. Friday it was 
And then there was a lady, she's like, I work at the NHS. I'm like, but what do you do at the NHS? Yeah, but what is that? Yeah. But but why? Like, you know, and she was just thinking, like, why is this guy asking me all these questions? Like, yeah, because, but I'm like, I really want to know. Like, I really want to know because I might get a script that's about your type of character. Mm. And now, or I might want to write a character like you based in something. And now I've got more references to draw on when I'm creating that character. You're there's my so point. reason. Yeah, there's so many reasons I want to know. I want to meet loads of people. I want to go to loads of places. Mm. I want to experience as much as I can. Just mm. because that's how I, I can be a better creative. And also I can uh, not only be a better creative, I can also... um. Mm. I also then develop a better um, understanding of the world around me. Mm. Or, you know, a, a, a truer representation of it, right? You've actually spoken to an NHS nurse. Maybe she's told you about her lunch break. Yeah. She hates the canteen food. Yeah. You could re- reflect that in the story you're telling. Or yeah, there's intricacies, you know, there's intricacies that I want to know. Like, you know, this woman even, she was like, you know, I, I can't remember what she said she did. And um, she was like, you know, sometimes I have to deliver I have to tell people, like, you know, they do disease oh, yeah. track. She does disease tracking. And so these people do tests. And she has to tell them sometimes um whether they should have a child or not. I was like, that's heavy. How but do you, do you know? get my point? Yeah, yeah, 100%. She's like, well, I'm at a party. I don't want to talk about that. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I was just like, but, you know, I've got her there. We yeah, got there. Yeah, yeah. We got to talking about that there. Mm. It matters. It matters to be curious and it matters to hold space for people outside of what they can do for you and outside of the creative industry. Because sometimes I speak to creative people and they're not very real. They're not here. They're yeah, there. they're very much, you know what, creative people, to be honest, are sometimes consumed by their dreams. Mm. They're so consumed by their dreams that they've got no time for anyone else's dreams, mm. and anyone else's vision. And mm. also, they're so consumed by their dreams that they've got, mm, they've got, they don't acknowledge anyone else. Mm. And so they're so, I don't know, man. They, they, it's, I don't want to say like creative people are like, oh, they're bougie or whatever, or like they're just into themselves and all of that. But it's like, it's, um, it's important to dream. Mm. But sometimes they're, they're they dream. They're yeah, they dream too selfishly. Yeah. Yeah. There's no one else. There's no space for anybody else. Yeah, that. they dream too selfishly. I yeah. think that's, 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 that's the way to describe it. What's what's the next dream for you? Ooh. Um, The next dream, weirdly, is for me to, like, make a project in the US. Mm-hmm. That is a That has been my dream all year. Mm-hmm. I've got a few deals on the table. And now that the strikes are over, God willing, I'll be able to achieve that dream. Wonderful. Where can we find you, Femi? I am on... Apparently, I'm on TikTok, but I'm not. <laughs> I am on TikTok. I am on TikTok, but I don't use it. I don't use it that much. That's funny. I said I'm on TikTok. I am on TikTok. I'm still trying not to be addicted to TikTok because every time I go on TikTok, it has stuff that I really want to consume. So I'm trying to manage my usage of it. I but know. I'm on Instagram heavy. Um, it's just my name. I'm on X. So would you like if, you know we used to have a tweet? What's what's an X? I call it Twitter. I ignore that bad. But do you get my point? What's an X? Yeah, yeah, yeah. X a is tweet. being confused. That's he's confused. Oh, yeah, because a tweet is still a tweet, right? A tweet. X sounds like something else. I'm not a I sent an X post. It's just not, it's just not as cool. I mean that is really interesting. Tweet Twitter is the only one that had a uh, a verb. Is it a verb to yeah. tweet? Yeah. Yeah, to tweet. Whereas that like, you do an Instagram post, a Facebook post. Yeah. No, maybe a TikTok. I TikToked. No, you send a snap. You can send a I snap. Snapped. I snapped. So, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. so, so yeah. you can send a snap. Send a snap. But tweet yeah. is the one that is like it's kind of powerful, isn't it? And also, if you look at the symbolism of a tweet, it's bad. It's a bad house. Tweeting is speaking. It's a speech-only platform. Originally, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole thing they did there. 
you know. It's kind of genius, but now it's an X. But anyway, I'm on X. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on Instagram heavy, and um, you can find me. Send me any questions, like anything that you need. I'm here. Demi, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I've really enjoyed it, and, and you know, sometimes you you have conversations with people. And um, you don't know how it's going to go. And it's always very, I think in these conversations, in articulating myself and what I do, I learn a lot about myself too. So thank you for that. Mm. Sometimes you need a complete stranger to come and soundboard your life for you. Yeah. And you sort of like bounce. I had an interview the other day and the lady was like, I'm a therapist. I'm a real life therapist. I couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa, this is deep. <laughs>